CMQ investors, welcome to the show. This is Chris Franco. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you my individual brokerage account performance from the past three years. The big question is, was I able to outperform the S&P 500? Let's check it out. What you're looking at on your screen here comes from Fidelity, which is where I have this brokerage account. And this particular tool shows my three-year time-weighted rate of return. The rate of return I've achieved in the last three years is about 23%, 22.94%. I mean, who's counting? Now let's compare that to the S&P 500, which did 18.92% or 19%. And just for good measures, the Dow Jones, which had a three-year rate of return of 18.12%. Now I'm not going to get cocky here. I'm not going to think, okay, I'm, you know, I'm the greatest ever. Wait, what's that? Nah, nah. Did the GOAT to show up? When I think of the greatest investors of all time, I think Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, me. Now, where were we? Kathy Wood, by the way. If, Kathy, if you're looking for a stock picker, how at your boy? Kathy's like, what's your experience? Well, Kathy, I used to work at Amico. Perfect. Uh, where was I? This is actually my taxable brokerage account that I've been managing myself since 2018. Now, I've talked about Alibaba. My Alibaba position was in my retirement account So I don't have a three-year weighted return to show you on that in the first place, but I don't want you to think I'm just cherry picking here. So you can see here in 2018, I was actually down. I lost 17%, not nice. 2019, I was up 3.37%. In 2020, I had a 65, or excuse me, a 66% return. Holler at your boy. Let's look at 2020 and see what it was that I made so much money on. I mean, when I say so much money, I only made a couple hundred million, am I right? <laughs> Apple was a big winner for me, and I still hold that. Chewy was my biggest winner, actually. Disney was another real big winner for me. Now, that was in part because those were larger positions. I had some smaller positions that if I had more, they would have done even better. <laughs> One of those was a company called Cardlytics. We can talk about it in another episode. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments. And another was Tech Target, which I still own today. It's a very small percentage of the portfolio, but it's done extremely well. Now, last but not least, looking at this portfolio and how it's done, you might say, well, why don't you just, you know, continue doing stock picking? You're obviously the GOAT, 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 GOAT. <laughs> yes, it's great that I was able to get some big wins, but some of those positions I held for less than a year and I paid short-term capital gains tax. So the post-tax results are a little bit different. Now, with that being said, I've tried to do more sensible things with those profits, specifically putting that into things like the VU or just any low cost index fund that I plan to hold and not touch for decades. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get exceptional performance, but it guarantees that I'm going to do no better or no worse than average. And the average investor tends to do below average. The second reason why I'm trying not to do more individual stock picking is because there's always a little bit of luck at play. I've read dozens of major studies that explain how the biggest mistake individual investors make tends to involve picking stocks. We tend to pick the wrong stocks or we sell at the wrong times and we just otherwise incur unnecessary costs that come through things like short-term capital gain, or commissions from trading, things like that. But generally speaking, the odds are not in my favor as an individual investor to try to keep picking or taking big positions in individual names. When I have some wins and I have high convictions in something that I can hold for a long time, like Apple or Berkshire, then I'll do that and let it ride. But otherwise, I wanna make sure I'm applying these things that I've learned, not just from those studies, but from investors like Jack Bogle, who's someone that I admire on a just a very deep level, extremely deep. I love you, Jack. You're a great guy, buddy. What did you say? If you have any questions for me, if I didn't cover something, please just let me know in the comments. I will make follow-up videos. I wish you all the best with whatever you're doing with your portfolio. I appreciate you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Tell a friend about it. For CMQ Investing, my name is Chris Franco. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.